ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओके रीडिंग फ्रॉम भगवदगीता चैप्टर टू टेक्स सिक्सटी फोर सो वील रीड फर्स्ट वन वन वर्ड Then the whole verse. You can repeat after me. Raga, Dvesha, Vimuktai, Tu, Vishayan, Indriyai, Charan, Atma Vashyai, Vidheya Atma, Prasadam. विधेयात्मा प्रसाद प्रसादमधिगच्छति 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 Good. Your pronunciation is improving. Every week you should come. Okay. What for translation? Raga. 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 Attachment. Attachment. Vesha. Vesha. And detachment. And detachment. <clears throat> Vimukte. Vimukte. By one who has become free from. By one who has become free from. To. So, but vishayan vishayan sense objects sense objects indriye indriye by the senses by the senses charan charan acting upon acting upon atma vashye atma vashye under one's control under one's control vidheyatma vidheyatma one who follows regulated freedom One who follows regulated freedom. Prasadam. Prasadam. The mercy of the Lord. The mercy of the Lord. Adi gachati. Adi gachati. Attains. Attains. Translation. But a person free from all attachment and aversion and able to control his senses through regulated principles of freedom can obtain the complete mercy of the Lord. Purport. by jivan geshla is about the tantra swami shri prabhu and the wisdom purport it is already explained that one may externally control the senses by some artificial process but unless the senses are engaged in the transcendental service of the lord 
there is every chance of a fall. Although the person in full Krishna consciousness may apparently be on the sensual plane, because of his being Krishna conscious, he has no attachment to sensual activities. The Krishna conscious person is concerned only with the satisfaction of Krishna and nothing else. Therefore, he is transcendental to all attachment and detachment. If Krishna wants, the devotee can do anything which is ordinarily undesirable. And if Krishna does not want, he shall not do that which he would have ordinarily done for his own satisfaction. Therefore, to act or not to act is within his control because he acts only under the direction of Krishna. This consciousness is a causeless mercy of the Lord, which the devotee can achieve in spite of his being attached to the central platform. Namaste Saraswati Devi, Gaurabhani Pacharine, Nirvishesh Ashwamadi Pashto Kibesha Tarini, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhuditya Ananda, Shri Arvita Gadadhara Shvasani Gaurabhattva, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Raga Dvesha Vimukta is to Vishayan Indriyesh Charan, Atma Bashe Vidhe Atma Prasadam Adhikachati. Translation again, but a person free from all attachment and aversion and able to control his senses through regulated principles of freedom can obtain the complete mercy of the Lord. So if you look at this verse, it begins with the word but, but a person free from all attachment. That means this is some continuing thought from previous verses. Okay, so now some of you were here in the last class, some were there in the class before last. The last previous two classes, we were covering two verses which are belong together. We were talking about that progression of how somebody, when he gets some material desire thought, then dhyayate vishayan pumsa. He thinks, if you start to think about material things, sangaste shubhajayate, then you become attached. You think again, you get attached. And when attachment comes, then desire comes that I have to do that. And when that karma desire is blocked somehow, then anger will come. Someone is stopping me from enjoying. Then bhavati sammoha. When one becomes angry, then karma krodho. Oh, sorry, krodha. Bhavati Sammoha, then one becomes bewildered. In anger, we cannot think properly. Cannot, we confuse, we lose our proper discrimination. Krodha Bhavati Sammoha, Sammoha Smriti Brahmsha. Sammoha Smriti Vibrama, <clears throat> memory is lost. Smriti Brahmsha Buddhi Nasha. When, when our memory goes, then intelligence goes. Buddhi nasha, pranashit, then we are finished. We're finished in the sense, we are not anymore controlled. We become controlled by the mind and senses. So somebody who is trying to control them, this happens. Okay, so that was the previous verse. Two verses, I just quoted by saying that. This verse is beginning, but, but, so this is, uh, we're going to see, but what, but what? Okay, so now here, if you look at this verse, it says, a person free from all attachment and aversion is able to control his senses. Attachment and aversion. Attachment, what is the word in Sanskrit for attachment? There are many words, but we can say raga. Raga, okay? Raga dvesha vimukte is two. Then opposite of rag is vairag, vairag, vairag avidhya nicha bhakti yoga. So rag is attachment and vairag is detachment. Now attachment, all of us have attachments. Okay, otherwise, why are we here in this material world? Our attachments are keeping us in this material world in the cycle of birth and death. No one can say, I am detached, I don't have attachment. Okay, then why are you in the material world? Or maybe he's liberated. 
may be very difficult. It's not so easy. So we all have attachments. Why we say attachment? Attach, like in the email, attach me. The email will go, the attachment will follow. It's stuck. Similarly, attachment means something. It is in us. We cannot leave it. It's always there. And it's attaching us to this world, material world, material body, attached. And then if we go into another body, it's following attachments, things which we cannot give up. We are always thinking about them. We want to do it. We want to meditate on those things, different sense, enjoying type of activities. So attachment, another is uh, rag, badha, bondage, different words are there. All of them mean the same thing. We are bound to this material world by our attachments. We are attracted to material things. That's why we're in the material world. We cannot blame anyone or anything else. Okay. That says, Purusha prakriti stohi bhunte prakriti jan guna. Karanam guna sangasya. Chapter 13. Is it 13? Hmm. In chapter 13, it says that the living entity is bound in this world. Why? Karanam guna sangasya. He is trying to attack, he is trying to enjoy this material world. Guna. Guna means the good, the Sattva Rajatama Guna. When we say Guna Sangha, somebody is associating with Guna, that means he is doing sense gratification. He is trying to enjoy in different ways. Okay. Okay. It doesn't mean one who doesn't do sense gratification does not enjoy. But when we try to enjoy this material world, then the Maya Shakti covers us. And that is Guna, basically. Okay. So, why are we attached? Why do we have attachments? This is from the previous lives. Previous lives, we did different activities. Okay, because we did those activities, the nature of this material world, if any karma you do, any activity to enjoy, then you want to do it again. This is the nature of the world. That's how matter is, Maya. If we try to enjoy, again we want. So that is, then attachment is developed. Okay. So when I say karma, karmic activity, there are different types of activities. Who can say? Karma is one, other? Different types of actions we can do. So action for my enjoyment is called karma. And other, others are? Huh? No, no. We're talking about action. So karma means any action I do for my enjoyment. What do you think others? Are. I'll give you a hint. One begins with B. <clears throat> I'll tell you second letter, I. Third letter, K. Vikarma. <clears throat> Karma. <clears throat> Karma. Vikarma. Then third one. Oh, you've not heard them. Huh? Um, you didn't do that uh, six session. Okay, fine. Maybe we should do that one. Okay, fine. So, karma and vikarma and akarma. You remember this? So, there are three types of action we can do. Karma means for my enjoyment. Vik, for my enjoyment, which is according to Shastra, giving charity, educa education, <clears throat> action according to Shastra for myself. Then action against Shastra for my enjoyment is called Vikarma. Okay, Vikarma. <clears throat> vikarma, Karma. Third is Akarma. Who can say what is Akarma? Hmm? It is action, not for me, for Krishna. In other words, Bhakti. Enjoyment of for Krishna. Okay, that is Akarma. Now, if someone does Karma, that is action for my enjoyment, then I'm binding myself more to this material. If I do so much sense gratification in this life, then Maya covers me so much that my next birth will be lower. I will not be so conscious. I'll be full of material desires. <clears throat> I'll be full of material desires. And if I do actions for Krishna's enjoyment, then next life, I'll be very... Uh, how can you say, not so deluded. I'll be advanced in consciousness. 
I have a higher spiritual play, platform. Okay, so that is karma and our karma, big karma. Okay, and if you didn't understand, at the end we can discuss more. You can ask. Okay, so now if one does karma again and again, he is developing strong attachment to this material world. Stronger attachment. That means more desires are coming. The more I try to enjoy, more desires are coming. More I have to enjoy. So this is the nature of this material world. Okay, so now, if somebody is just sitting peacefully, okay, but then what will happen? Aversion. Hmm? Aversion. Aversion. Aversion is opposite of attachment. I, I'll come to that also. I'll explain it. <coughs> Actually, I asked some questions online. They were answering. Akarma, vikarma. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, I was saying here about sense gratification actions bind me more to this material world. That's why Shastra says that the more we do material sense gratification, the more we become bound to this world. And the general rule I'll tell you, in this life, if I do more sense gratification, next life will be a low birth and I'll have so many material desires. I'll not have a controlled mind and controlled senses. But in this life, if I live a controlled life, not so much sense gratification, but regulated life of bhakti and devotion, then my next life will be a higher consciousness and more controlled mind and born in a place where I can practice bhakti more further. So now in nectar of devotion, they talk about something called the cycle of sin. Okay, this is <clears throat> to understand how is it that somebody commits sin? or desires to enjoy in this material world. All right. The beginning is avidya. Avidya means generally vidya, avidya, ignorance, no knowledge. But in this case, avidya means no knowledge that I am a soul and servant of Krishna. Which, and who is in avidya? All of us, all of us. So when we are in avidya, then what happens? Then the desires are born. Because I don't understand I'm a soul, I'm a servant of Krishna. Then other thoughts come. So let me do this, let me do that. Let me go climb the mountain. Let me do stamp collection. Let me do this, let me do so many things. Why? Because I don't understand. I'm a servant of Krishna, I have to serve Krishna. That's what I have to do. I don't understand. Instead, what do I do? I try to do so many material things, avidya. So from avidya comes karma, or vikram. That means, in the state of avidya, I thinking, let me enjoy. Okay. So another thing about avidya is that it has something called kut. Kut means so many desires are there in the way. Desires are there, then I may act on the desire. If I don't act, it's good. Okay. But I may act. So I'll act on the desire. Okay. And when I act, I enjoy, then what happens? Two things happen. First of all, I did something, so there'll be a reaction. Okay. Example that uh, I try to enjoy some uh, physical sports. Okay. Enjoyment, my enjoyment. So what happens? First of all, I become attached to do that more. Okay. And because I did it, I have a desire to do it again. Attachment is born. So next life, I'll have a desire to do sport again. I'll be born maybe in a sports family, maybe. Okay, so two things, reaction came. And another thing is called kuta. Kut means that again, desire to do that thing. Okay, a little complicated, sorry. It, it, basic thing, but <clears throat> not able to explain in such a clear way. This is in Nectar of Devotion, a book by Prabhupada. So it's explaining that somebody who is in avidya state of Maya, he can do his desire to do sense gratification. And when he does sense gratification, two things happen. Desire to again do sense gratification, and second, attachment to that sense gratification, attachment to this material world is made stronger. Okay, so this is called cycle of sin. Now, the path of bhakti, spiritual life, is if we have attachments, which we have and all of us have, it becomes difficult. Attachments are pulling us because we will say, example. 
Some people will, will drink alcohol. We'll say, if you're doing bhakti, don't take alcohol. And they'll be addicted. You have to take alcohol or don't take drugs. You have to take drugs. Or don't drink tea, coffee, or don't smoke, or don't have illicit relations with women, or so many things. And But they say, no, we want to do that. Why? Because attachments are pulling. Okay, this is a problem. This is a problem. Right here in the beginning of Bhagavad Gita, they are talking about attachments because this is blocking bhakti. Attachments block us. Attachments can be gross attachment, like attachment to things, physical things. Or it can be subtle. Subtle means attachment to fame. Puja, love, pratishta. Pratishta means like, I have to be special. I'm not a normal. I have to be above everyone. I'll dress this way. I'll put my hair like that. I'll, you know, just so that I can be so seen as special. Pratishta. Okay. Other is puja. Puja means I want to be liked by everyone. So I'm not going to do anything that people don't like. I'll be liked. Puja. Love means I want some benefit in everything I do. I'm not doing without profit. I'm helping someone. I think he'll help me. Okay. So attachment, a desire for enjoyment. Attachment can be attachment to physical things or attachment for <clears throat> subtle things in the mind or other things. Okay, so bujala pratishta, subtle or attachment to physical things. But the problem is that these attachments, they pull us away from dharma. They pull us away from bhakti. Okay, it's a problem. And especially if we have so many attachments, it becomes a problem. Now, look at Arjun. So Arjun had a duty. His duty was as a Kshatriya. He had to fight. But his attachments came in the way. <clears throat> he said that, how am I, how shall I fight my guru? How shall I fight my brothers? Katam Maham Bhishma Drona, you know, Bhishma, my guru, Drona, Bhishma, my grandfather. How will I fight these people? He was attached. But his duty was, you are Kshatriya. A dharma has happened. You have to establish dharma by fight, by force. That is the Kshatriya's duty. There will always be people in this world who are <clears throat> mischievous. So they need to be corrected by force. You, if you tell them, they will not listen. So Kshatriyas are needed. And then Kshatriya cannot decide, I don't want to fight. Then all kind of adharma bibhava krishna. Adharma will come. So Arjuna was attached. I don't want to fight. Attachment. Why? He's attached to some idea, which is adharmic. So Krishna had to tell him, no, this is attachment. This is not correct. You have to do what I say. Mama Nusmara Yudhyacha. You think of me, what I say, and follow me, fight. And he told him that because Arjuna had many reasons not to fight. Actually, it's mentioned that one was compassion, enjoyment, oh, and one was because I'll get a sinful reaction. Another was, or oh, the, the destruction of the dynasty, family dynasty. Because I'll kill all these people, then who will protect the women, their wives, then they'll be adharmic. So many reasons yet not to fight. These were attachments. So one by one, Krishna addressed each of them. Okay, so we can see that, that uh, Arjuna was attached, therefore he didn't want to do his duty. Similarly, us also. Due to certain attachment, we cannot go further in bhakti or we cannot take up something. These are due to attachment because I want to hold on to them. Here are att attachment means like a rope is tied. They are calling someone, come, come. No, no, I cannot come. My hand is tied. I cannot come. It's like they're calling you, come on the path of bhakti. Come ahead. Move on. Let's go higher. No, no, I don't want to go. My hand is tied. Untie your hand. No, I want to be tied. We, we want to be in attachment. Why? Because we are thinking this is better. We think I'm happy here. When you don't, no, no, it's nice. You come there. You become free from envy, anger, lust, desire. Everything will go. Spiritual happiness. Knowledge of God. Knowledge of soul. But we are tied up. No, no. I'm, I'm happy here. I'll be tied up in my attachment. So these are attachments. Attachments are there. They block us. And anytime they'll come. I'm just sitting peacefully. Attachment comes. Something comes. Let's do this. No, I don't want to do it. No, you have to do it. Let's do it. Okay. Because I did it before. I'm addicted. I have to do it. Attachments is a problem. You can see that. It's a problem. How will we do bhakti? How will we advance? 
attachments. Now you ask me about what is aversion, okay? Aversion is opposite of attachment. Example, I really like sweet. Aversion, I don't like chili. Or I don't like sweets. Other one says, I like. Now like and don't like, they are, you can say like you have a coin. So Prabhupada said it's two sides, it's two sides of the same coin. If I say I like, others say I don't like. Why are you liking or not liking? Just be neutral. Just serve Krishna, just do bhakti and go on in your life. No, no, I like, I don't like. You don't have to talk. There's no need for that. Attachment and aversion. Okay. This is uh, two sides of the same coin. Huh? One of our preferences, other are dislikes. But somebody who is Krishna conscious, he doesn't say, I like, I don't like. He's just saying, I'm serving Krishna. Whether I like or don't like, I'm doing it. I'll wake up in the morning. I like it. I don't like it. I'll do it. Hot weather. It's too hot today. I cannot. Uh, no, it's too cold. I cannot take a bath with cold water. Too cold. Okay. Oh, but um, if it's good, I'll be fresh. I'll do it for Krishna. He's not thinking, I like it. I don't like it. That doesn't come in the picture. If someone is serving Krishna. So... How to overcome attachments? How to overcome? This is the question. Attachments is problem. I said that all of us have attachments, how they come, how they're disturbing our devotional service. So now the question is how to overcome attachments. Okay. Now this shloka says here, but a person free from attachment and aversion, able to control his senses through regulative principles of freedom, can obtain complete mercy of the Lord. We want to come to Krishna and get his mercy. If we get the mercy of Krishna, what will happen? Then we will get jnana, we will get bhakti, love of God. We will become free from suffering. We will become eternal. We will become happy in full knowledge. That's what we need. That's what we want. Okay. So this verse is saying how to come to that. We have to come free of our attachments and aversion. All right, how to do it? It's saying here through regulative principles of freedom. It says, Vishnu, Prasad, Vimukte is free from, yeah, Vimukte, free from Indriya, senses, actually, Atma Vashe, the one's control. Vidhya Atma, one who follows regulated freedom. That means rules of sadhana bhakti. By practicing Krishna consciousness, Gradually, the attachments will go. When attachments go, we become free. Now we think we are free. We are not free. Okay. Because what happened? We have, we have, for example, attachment to certain things, attachment to ideas in this material world. So many attachments. So we are not free. We are under control of our mind, our senses, and our desires. In, in this court, every 15th August, Independence Day, they like to give this lecture. What? We are not free. <laughs> we think we are free. We are not free because I'm sitting here and my stomach will say, I want to eat. I'm so hungry. I want to eat. And I cannot say, I'm not going to listen to my stomach. I have to listen. Or I cannot say that, okay, that uh, I'm sitting here and now it's become so hot. I cannot listen to the lecture, it's so hot, I need the fan. I cannot say I'll ignore. Well, if you are advanced, you can ignore. But you understand that attachments are disturbing. So now, how to come free? It says here, by regulated principles of freedom. Okay, what does this mean? We have to, we have to engage our senses in serving Krishna. Okay, senses will always want engagement. They'll always want to do something. Okay, can you imagine? You cannot tell the senses, don't do it, so just be quiet. You cannot. Just like a child, a naughty child. He goes there, he touches something, picks up something, starts to break something. Then you tell, you take him away, don't do that. Sit down. Sit down. And again, he look something, get up, go pick up something, and again, again, again. Then you bring him again. Can't you sit still? No, they cannot sit still. Neither can we sit still because we have. Senses. Senses will always want something to do. 
we have to do something you can so now what we have to do that naughty child give him something to do he's so busy okay give him some toy he play with the toy do something or give a doll some girl child and give the doll or give that boy some car then he'll be busy if you can leave it similarly senses want engagement you cannot just sit like that you have something you have to do something so what should you do idle mind is a devil's workshop if you don't do anything definitely you're going to do something unproductive and wrong better do something my suggestion is you know you come to temple clean the temple do kirtan do some services chant hari krishna or take a book open read bhagavad gita or attend some class do kirtan with friends so many things you can do we go book distribution so many engagements and when you do those engagements what happens mind is occupied that's one thing another thing senses become pure purified if senses are not pure what happens senses desire to enjoy matter but when we more and more engage in senses body and mind to serve krishna after some time what will happen that the senses become pure pure means that now they want to serve krishna they don't want to enjoy they want to come to bhakti but for that we have to engage them in krishna engage them in bhakti so that is the system so active senses have to be engaged actually our senses even when we reach perfection what happens some people think when you get perfection you merge into some light nothing like that no perfection means we go to krishna to goloka in goloka there we have senses we have a body we have a mind okay and then we engage in serving him. okay we engage in krishna leela in the past times it's not that we are idle even in the spiritual or in perfection we are engaged in sense uh, in uh, different activities okay so now the problem we are not stopping activity but what we are saying is that we have to stop bad activity material activity okay because we never stop activity even in the spiritual world we are in, we will be doing things but we will have pure senses senses will only be serving krishna so if we want to become free from attachment and from free from this material world the way to become free from our attachment i was speaking before is to use our mind body senses to serve krishna do different krishna seva there are so many things we can do when we do that gradually the material desires go and desire for senses to enjoy this material world go but again if you sit idly something will happen you will this is again desire to do some material activity okay so we have to engage them senses are now covered because they are covered they are not attracted to krishna okay so example i cover my ears then if you if some music is playing someone is talking i cannot hear is it or i want to eat i cover my tongue and i eat i cannot taste this is the situation now okay the situation is our senses are covered therefore we cannot really perceive krishna but our real consciousness is that we have to perceive krishna but it cannot happen in the material state so we have to remove the covering how do you remove the covering sarva padi virir muktam tat paratvena nirmalam rishikena rishikesha sevanam tir uchate bhakti means to serve krishna with purified senses not covered by maya so to become free from maya how do we do it serve krishna do services do chant read senses become uncovered okay when they are uncovered then we can enjoy we want to enjoy now how will you enjoy with covered senses if i cover your tongue with a cloth i tell have gulab jamun will you taste nothing if i tell okay look at this beautiful painting you cannot see either we cannot enjoy with covered senses when we admire we cannot we cannot enjoy now you are trying to enjoy how will you enjoy we have to uncover our senses uncover our pure self which is covered by maya okay so how will we do that we will do it by this process of bhakti because when we do bhakti it purifies it the purpose of senses is to serve krishna we mentioned so many times 
the purpose of our senses is for Krishna. Now we are using it in the wrong way. Then we'll suffer. Suffer means we'll be depressed, we'll not be happy. Okay. And if you think, no, I'll enjoy this material world. How long will you enjoy it? How long? You, okay. What do you want to do? I want to go cycling in the mountain. Okay, go, go. How long will you go? Then you come back. Or you'll get tired. Oh, what else you want to do? I want to see that film. I like that film. See the film. Okay, like see it again and again and again. And then you cannot see. How much will you see? But we do bhakti again, again, again. We'll chant, we'll dance and kirtan. And we'll do the same thing. Same festivals we'll observe every year and still so much happiness. We'll hear the same knowledge. We'll not say it's all as fresh. And then that will that's enjoying. So we cannot even enjoy it. Okay, in this purpose, the first sentence is speaking. It's already explained that one may externally control senses by some artificial process, but unless senses are engaged in transcendental service of the Lord, there's every chance of a fall. This is saying that if you think my mind is not controlled, my sense is not controlled, by force I'll control, I'll stop it. You cannot do that. Rather, if you want to control mind senses, start from it says here. Okay. So a Krishna conscious person. One who is Krishna conscious, it says here, he is not concerned with attachment, detachment. Now, a normal person, what he says, I like this, I don't like that. I want to eat this, I don't eat that. I like rain, I don't like sun. I want to go to this place, I don't like that place. You see, whole life is I like, I don't like. But a Krishna conscious person doesn't think like that. He thinks, what does Krishna like? I like that. What Krishna doesn't like, I won't like that. Okay, and he'll not even think about like and dislike. He'll simply do his duty in Krishna consciousness. If you can do that, this is the real sense control. This is the real sense control. Otherwise, we cannot be controlled. Except when we are engaged in senses in Krishna. So, how do we reach that platform? We'll reach that platform if we decide in our mind that I'm going to use my mind, body, soul, senses for Krishna, not for my enjoyment. But because sometimes we are living in this material world, we may have to do things for people in our friends and family circle, but we'll do it not for our enjoyment, just out of duty. We'll do it. But same time, we'll think that I want to simply serve Krishna. That's the purpose. We have to decide in the mind first. Okay, in the mind we decide it, and then we have to practice it, do it. And when we are only using our body, mind, soul, and senses center for serving Krishna, then no attachments. Attachments do not come. They may come in the beginning, but you ignore them. Just like some weeds are coming, but if you don't water them, they'll go. So we stop, stop fulfilling our material desires. Okay, but at the same time, we are doing bhakti, so we are happy. We are not bored, we are not dull. We are happy in bhakti, but we are not fulfilling material desires. So then material desires will go, attachments will go. This is how to remove material attachments. Simply engage in service of Krishna. They will go, don't, don't listen to them. You know, don't, if you know someone is a mischievous person, you're not going to go and listen to him. Yes, what are you saying? What do you want? No, he's going to do some mischief. Just like monkeys come in the morning. When they come, we'll chase them away. We know when monkeys come, it's just to do mischief. We don't want to see, okay, what do you want? What do you want? What do they want? We know what they want. They came to steal and to do mischief. So similarly, don't give the mind any gap. What do I want? What? No, don't listen to the mind. Simply your intelligence has to tell your mind. Okay, now chant. Okay, now read. Read Bhagavad Gita. Read Prabhupada books. Attend Bhagavad Gita class. That's it. Don't give it gap. Don't give any gap. Otherwise, he'll take you to the lowest position. That's the nature of the mind. Okay. This is a higher state. The highest state of beings is when one lives for Krishna, not for us. I'm living to satisfy Krishna. My senses, my body, my money, my car, my room, my everything, my house. I'm serving Krishna. This is a higher state. We then come free from attachment and aversion. And 
how can we do that through knowledge detachment and practice knowledge means i have to attain knowledge who am i who is krishna how i have to serve knowledge then track then detachment detachment means that i want something but mind is pulling my senses are pulling there my attachments are pulling but i turned my in my mind i said but i read in bhagavad gita i am a servant of krishna and sense enjoyment is not good so i reject it detached vairagya detached from that so first there was knowledge second detachment third is practice because i'll do it but i'll fail something will happen i'll fail i cannot do it again try okay i'm doing it it's not working again again try practice practice here we learn to play mridanga we learn to play karta practice practice and you learn like that so similarly practice then you will get it. knowledge detachment practice can take us to that platform of krishna consciousness and then we become free from attachments okay then we can be fixed in consciousness otherwise we in krishna consciousness then mind is going there then there then i'm fixed again then i'm going it's confusion but i if i simply use the mind body mind and so, and senses and voice for krishna use it speak about krishna distribute books chant hari krishna read the books attend the uh, programs in the temple do services seva then purify peaceful then become in krishna consciousness then we become free from aversion and attachment this is the method this is what this verse is saying but a person free from attachment and aversion able to control his senses through regulative principles of freedom can obtain mercy of the lord then will attain mercy of krishna by serving him how by following the process of bhakti and engaging all our mind body and senses okay hari krishna okay is there any question it's again as i said related to previous to the previous verse previous two verses and you were last time you didn't come but before that you came you came last time but before okay so questions here online any questions okay yeah nothing there okay fine Sure. Wait a minute. I'll move the sound and we have typed it. Transcendental service. Transcendental service. That is in the purple. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Transcendental. This word, if you want to, in uh, Sanskrit is gunatitya. That means not on the level of satvaraja tamogun. Spiritual level. Transcend. Okay, Triguna Titya. Another is Param, different words. Okay, so um, it, I want to see the context. So where is where is it at the beginning? At the ah, uh, here it is. Okay, fine. Okay. It's already explained that one may externally control the senses by some artificial process, but unless the senses are engaged in transcendental service of God, there is no chance of hope. So transcendental service is basically seva. service but transcendental means spiritual that means we are engaged in spiritual activity in krishna service okay otherwise material activity is for some uh, society party you know ngo poor feeding the so many things but service of god krishna is transcendental so the purport is saying we should serve krishna in a spiritual we should do transcendental activity spiritual activity means service to krishna in that way it will be will be purified and be able to control ourselves okay okay very good very nice okay shrimad bhagavad gita ki jai shila prabhat ki jai